This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our hearts are glad as we rejoice in the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let's pray. God, our hope, today we remember that when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, the people shouted hosannas and proclaimed him Lord. Help us to honour him today by choosing the fullness of life he offers. Forgive us when we have not reflected his depth of love for others and you in our lives. Forgive us when we are closed, when we have closed our ears to his call to follow him. To you be all the praise and all the hosannas. In the name of Christ. Amen. Today's Bible reading comes from the Gospel of St Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This day, Palm Sunday, the church shares with the disciples in offering thanks and praise for Jesus. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Acknowledging Jesus as the anointed one of God, as Messiah. As I think back on my many years as part of the life of the church, I have many warm memories of the celebration of this day. Lots of singing whole congregations waving branches. I can even recall occasions when Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was reenacted using a real donkey. And, obvious, and for obvious reasons, I seem to remember that the donkey was not allowed in the church for too long. But in this scary, uncertain and strange time of COVID-19, I want to draw attention to a couple of elements of the story which I hope are pertinent. First, Jesus enters Jerusalem like a king. But he does not come as a vain, war-making, conquering king. He's a different kind of leader from the many self-serving ones that litter history. He comes as one who is humble, who is gentle, riding on a donkey. Jesus offers leadership not by grabbing earthly power for himself, but by giving of himself even to the point of death. Jesus entered Jerusalem not to take control of the city and claim a gilded throne, but to be arrested and hoisted on a rude cross. Secondly, his entry into Jerusalem has quite an impact. The Gospel writer Matthew tells us that the whole city of Jerusalem was in turmoil, asking, who is this? In fact, the English word turmoil probably understates things. It would be probably more accurate to translate the original Greek as saying that the city was shaken up, as in an earthquake. Jesus enters into Jerusalem and shakes things up. And actually, Jesus continues to shake things up. For in Jesus we discover the earth-shattering truth about God. That God is a God who loves so much that God suffers with us and for us. And if that is not comfort and hope enough, God promises in Jesus the joy of the resurrection. Good Friday is followed by Easter Sunday. 
We do not know how long we will need to be hunkered down because of COVID-19, or how many will suffer or how many will die. We do not know when things will return to some sort of normal or what that will even be like. It's a very scary time, but we are not without hope. We are never without hope. We discover this in Jesus, the one who rode into Jerusalem, gentle and humble, riding on a donkey. Let us spend a few moments now in prayer with a particular focus on those who lead by serving. Christians across the world pray this prayer as reflecting our oneness in Christ, the Lord's Prayer. As one church leader said, the Lord's Prayer is a wonderfully comprehensive prayer and within it can be found all we need to say. So let's together share in the Lord's Prayer using the version that you're most familiar with, perhaps in another language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. مرحبا انا شاغي قصابيان اعمل حاليا مع كنيسة سانت لوكس يونايتنج تشيرش كمنسقة لخدمة المجتمع ودوري هو التواصل مع العوائل اللاجئة التي تعرضت للاضطهاد بسبب ايمانها المسيحي ومساعدتهم وهم يبدأون حياتهم الجديدة في استراليا من خلال تقديم الدعم لهم ومساعدتهم على بناء علاقات جديدة والتواصل مع كنيسة سانت لوكس ومن ثم المجتمع الاكبر هذا المجتمع الذي يرحب باللاجئين ويساعد ليشعروا بأنه في بلدهم إذا أردتم المزيد من المعلومات اتصلوا بي على البريد الإلكتروني أدنى وشكرا Let us come together with the prayers of the people Let us pray Loving God, we give thanks for the hope we have in Jesus, who led a life of true leadership, a life of service. We give thanks for the gift of the church, for even though we are not able to meet as a community, we are one in Christ. We remember and pray for all those who serve, who choose to support others in these strange and scary times. We remember those who serve in shops, those who deliver parcels, food and goods, those who keep spaces clean, political leaders and public servants who are constantly having to make hard decisions, those who offer medical support and care to those who are ill. We remember those who at times are struggling, facing difficulties great and small, both those known to us and those known only to you. We recall those who are suffering in other lands who do not have the resources with which our country is blessed. Give us the wisdom to discern how we can respond to the needs of others in Christ-like ways. And a prayer of comfort. O oh God, in our times of loneliness, doubt and turmoil, may we be reminded to entrust ourselves to your unfailing love. Grant us discernment about when to protect ourselves and when to make ourselves vulnerable. Empower us to witness in word and deed to your steadfast, never failing, liberating and transforming love made known in the person of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Today we begin a journey because today is the beginning of Holy Week and we go along with Jesus on that journey that goes all the way to Calvary and to the empty tomb. And I invite you to perhaps do something each day during this week to uh, 
to, to reflect on this journey of Jesus and think about its implications for you. Maybe that uh, might involve, you, involve using some prayer resources. And again, there's plenty online if you want to search them out. And there are resources on the St. Luke's Congregational website if you'd like to look at those too. Go well. Keep safe. Know that God is with you. And may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, this day and forever. Amen. Amen.